wherever you are, begin to worship the Lord. Begin to worship the Lord. and the king to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night
let your power be demonstrated. Let your glory be seen. Let your power be manifested. Allah ba shaka le mez. Zopra kapo go shaka ba. Zempra kobehi. Ipraku ya mandili ke usombro kosia. Iska. Ha tabaku pebe de usabra hanteke. Rekuma jine kuzi asa. Reto majine popobo shtabaha. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you. share this with somebody. Listen to me. I want you to, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you can receive all of the necessary updates. Amen. Click the notification bell so that you can receive all of the updates that you would uh, need. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, I, I hope that the volume and everything is, is where you would like it. I hope that it is good. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Kadriana. God bless you. Thank you for sharing. God bless you. Okay, so this is um, a very heavy topic this morning. I want just, if I can get six people just to pray in the spirit with me. Amen. If I can get six people to pray in the spirit with me. Rapatori kapata katara kote. Irakatumi azangri ituba sikele. Jesus, we bless your name. We praise you. We worship you. 
we invite you made roko ri amando roko to me sanre e kato brohoza ze pra kamato ke re kata mesita ze kroto to broso to brohoska je la kabra to kome ya sandele ko bade hasha rando le kambra kabamano sabahaje e jana bazite de 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 dio sabre you are begin to pray in spirit rakabano sipre e koto bozana la kabano sika da basuta rita ta basuto robo se rita lo bozana bazde rato koto to 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 jene da da boza come on pray for another 30 seconds come da kashuta holy spirit we need you we need you we need you come now come now raka brako pelio sopra kotos ze proto koto koto po shaya bakate era Ture katara kote mekeza, zungra bata te beke te kibe, bono kobos kataba katabe, ben doke bezi de, e la batu se petezi, rasu brete bezi, zambra su kabro koto basata, rashe metolia zambre skede. Oh God, we give you glory. E makumi a shanka de bos, rasu bre kataba si telekeas. God, we give you name glory. We give you name glory. Hallelujah. We give your name glory. Hallelujah. Rebono sopra kataba. People of God, listen to me this morning. This is going to go deep. I need somebody just to be interceding as we are teaching this thing. And I want to tell you why this is going to be deep. Why I believe God is saying some of the things that he is saying. And speaking some of the things that he is speaking. It is because we are on the cusp of a revival. We are on the cusp of a revival. Indeed, revival must come. But in order for us to embrace revival, in order for our children, our parents, our generation to be revived, hallelujah, there must be a dimension of understanding that comes, a dimension of revelation. Before there is a manifestation, there must come a revelation. There must come a revealing of information that will give us the strategies to carefully handle and preserve the glory of God that he is dispensing to us. Good morning. Koi music, we bless God for you. Good morning. Amen. So, as we go into what we are saying, God said to tell the people of God, here as I was preparing, he said to tell them that there are some of you that have broken through a demonic barrier. God bless you, Mother Jackie. God bless you, Christina. There are some of you that are beginning to break through a dimension. The reason why we talk about altars and the reason why we talk about blood, the reason why we talk about all of these things is so that people can gain an understanding of what God is saying, what God is doing in this hour and so that your understanding can be heightened and taken to another level. There is a revival that is coming. There is a moment where there are going to be miracles. There are going to be signs. There's going to be salvation. People are going to be getting saved. There's going to be radical experiences that are going to take place very soon where you are, where I am. But there must come a dimension of revelatory information that will allow us to overthrow the powers of the enemy. Okay? We need a dimension of revelatory information. So, people of God, I want you to stick with me this morning. I want to tell you something because we are talking about understanding the connection between blood and altars. Understanding the connection between blood and altars. Amen. I want to tell you something that is going to be very challenging as we get out to the offset. The Bible says that the kingdoms of this world have now become the kingdoms of our God. This is what the angel of the Lord is going to say in the end times. Amen. 
The kingdoms of this world have now become the kingdoms of our God. Meaning that before then, the kingdoms of this world had not been the kingdoms of our God. And when we backtrack from Revelation, we go to the book of Matthew. As the devil is tempting Jesus, he's saying to him, these kingdoms have been given into my hand and I give them to whomsoever I will. Okay? Then we go all the way back to the book of Genesis and we see that God gave Adam dominion. Eve took of the fruit and gave to her husband. He ate. Amen? And so we lost dominion. God bless you. Prophetess Christy Rove, God bless you. And so we are in um, an understanding here. So I want you to understand something. As I speak about the Bahamas, I'm speaking as a prophet of God. There is a crime wave that has hit our country. And I remember the moment it started. There was a particular man that was being elected as prime minister. And I remember the day. This was before I really understand anything about the prophetic realm or about the spirit realm. I remember the day that this man was elected as prime minister. I believe it was for a third term, for a third term. And I remember that day so clearly. There was a dark cloud that literally, not spiritually, that literally came over the land and the entire atmosphere of the country shook and the entire atmosphere shifted. I want you to understand the connection and understanding the connection between blood and altars. Good morning, Deborah Andrews. When this man came into office in this country, there was a dark cloud that came with him. Now as we backtrack and we go into this time right now, that moment, I remember immediately that week, there was an increase in murder in the country. Immediately as that man took office, that very same week, it was like out of nowhere, there was just this uh, um, increase of murder. Amen? I don't choose political sides. I'm just speaking as a servant of God here. So the Lord started to show me and take me into some things that happened. And to understand that in order for that man to have won that election, that man went to the mountains of Haiti and he made a sacrifice. He made a blood sacrifice to win the power of the country and to win that election. I don't know if anybody's hearing me. I'm saying something very, very serious here. Good morning, Deborah Andrews. How are you? Okay? I don't want to continue until I'm sure that we are moving. There's a bit of a lag, a delay, but I want to continue what I'm saying. I know the enemy was going to fight this. Because once revelation comes, we cannot be stopped. Once revelation comes, once insight comes, we cannot be stopped. We cannot be stopped. There is nothing that the devil can do to stop us. Amen? Okay, I'm seeing, I'm seeing it now. This is not political. I'm telling you, See, there are levels of priesthood. Amen? There are levels of priesthood, and there are certain things that you can only understand within your level of priesthood. If you, if you have not been initiated into a certain level of priesthood in the things and in the realms of God, there are things that I will say to you that will, you, it will just fly past you. You would not even understand. But those who are called to that level of priesthood would, initially, would immediately begin to understand what it is that the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So I'm saying something powerful here. So, that person would have made a blood sacrifice of a child. Hear me. A blood sacrifice to win that election. Because I was always called to be a prophet, there were things that God would allow me to see. That now as I go back and I look over the course of time, I understand it now, but I didn't understand it then. I'll never forget that day. Nobody had to tell me that the government that was in had changed. I knew because there was something so different about the atmosphere. There was something that was palpable. It was tangible. The atmosphere shifted over the country. What happened as a result 
what happened as a result is that because that man would have made that blood sacrifice to win the power of the country, there was an exchange that was done with the demonic principality that was the altar that the principality was sacrificed to. And so the exchange that was made was for the power of the prime ministership. There will be blood in the land. There will be blood in the land. Amen. For the power of the country, there will be blood in the land. There will be shedding of blood, innocent blood. Men will die, women will die, children will die in large numbers to appease the sacrifice. Yes, Mary, being a demonic covenant. A demonic covenant. Now, what I'm saying is very deep because we have to understand the connection between blood and altars. Hear me in the realm of the Holy Ghost. Because you can pray against the spirit of murder as much as you want in this country. But until you understand that there is a blood sacrifice that was placed on an altar in Haiti to bring this country down, that one man that for power, he made a sacrifice. He was given powers. He was given authority. He was given legions. He made that sacrifice. And now, Many years later, the country is in, in problems and in turmoil. You cannot address the spirit of murder. You must tear down that altar that was legally situated. It was situated in a legal prospect. Meaning that the man knew what he was doing and he understood the exchange. I'm talking about understanding the connection, understanding the power of blood and how they affect altars. Now, today, we are looking at the island of Hispaniola, where Haiti is. This is the epicenter of witchcraft. Voodoo is the most powerful form of witchcraft on the earth. The most powerful. Every, every witch doctor, every wizard knows it, that that form of African voodoo is the most powerful form. Okay? Now, when you backtrack and you understand what they did, to overthrow the French that they made a pact, a blood pact, a covenant with Satan himself to regain authority, to have power to overthrow the French. So when you look now at how broken that island is, the government is, the system is, the economy of that island, you will understand that you cannot just go and pray against poverty. You cannot just go and pray against murder. You cannot just go and pray against violence. You have to deal with the altar and understand that somebody placed that altar there. Somebody made a covenant with that altar. Somebody made a blood contract and a blood pact with that altar. It's deep. I want you to know this is going to be very, this is going to be very, very uh, troubling for some of you. Listen to me. This is going to be very troubling for some of you. But as I speak to you now as a man of God, I want you to hear me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I speak to you now, I want you to hear me. Many countries, the way that power is gained is based on blood sacrifice. Many times, the person with the greatest blood sacrifice, the person that is willing to make the covenant, that is willing to shed innocent blood, is the person that wins. I don't know if you're hearing me this morning. And so we're talking about the connection between blood and altars. This is going to be very powerful this morning. So when we look here in the word of God, let's go to the scriptures. There are two scriptures I want to read to you this morning. Number one, it says, And he said, this is God speaking to Cain, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth out unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Let's also look at Leviticus 17 and 11. 
for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. May God bless the reading of his holy word. So as we look at the scriptures, we want to understand some things that are, are going to, to really, really, really bring some things home. The blood is the bridge between the physical world and the spiritual world. It opens portals for spiritual entities to affect the earth. Look at what the scripture is saying. Say for, it is saying that when Cain kills Abel, it says, and now at the curse, sorry, sorry, let me go back. That the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. So we're understanding when you begin to look, the blood can speak. We cannot speak necessarily in the spirit realm, but blood can speak. God heard. Listen to what the scripture is saying. God actually heard. God was able to hear Abel's voice crying from the ground through the blood. So blood is a portal between the spiritual world and the physical world. So by, by blood, spiritual entities can have physical advantages, a physical presence, and can affect physical situations through blood. Blood is a very serious thing. So, blood is a living component that has the ability to speak and communicate in the spirit world. You can only make an altar covenant with a spirit through spilled blood. I want you, I'm going to say something very deep to you. This is going to be a very, very deep teaching. The only way an altar is viable and effective, good morning, Judy Charlton, is that there must be blood. Whether it's an evil altar, whether it's a godly altar, even in the, the Torah, even in the Pentateuch, we see the priests having to kill the calf, the goat, the lamb, to make atonement for the people and in order for them to be able to go before the mercy seat in the holies of holies. So you see that blood is playing a very significant component in what is happening. Amen. I'm going to make this make sense to you in a minute. So blood is a living component that has the ability to speak and communicate in the spirit world. And you need blood in order to make an altar. So every viable altar must be initiated by a blood sacrifice. The sacrifice allows the altar priest to communicate to spiritual entities and summon their powers. Now this is where I want to get. Because this is going to blow your mind. Demonic powers and agents do not attack individuals. They attack bloodlines. I want you to hear me. This is going to blow your mind. Demonic powers do not attack individuals. They attack bloodlines. That's why you will see that when somebody is dealing with something in the family, there is a systemic and there is a traceable pattern of this particular behavior, this particular challenge, this particular problem in the bloodline. Because demons don't just attack individuals, they attack bloodlines. Karamando sabrakatabaskio. They attack bloodlines. Because you have to understand the power of a bloodline. And this is why we're going to pray some prayers and we are going to break some curses today. Because anybody in your bloodline that was an occultist, a spiritist, a fetish priest, a voodoo doctor, a native doctor, uh, connected to the occult, to Obes, to Santeria, anybody that has done it and they are connected to your bloodline, you and them, you are connected. You are tied to them. Listen to what the Bible says. He says, he is the holy God who visits the iniquity of the forefathers upon the children down to the third and fourth generation. What is the criteria of that? Of them that hate God. Of them that despise the name of God. Of them that hate God, that practice wickedness in the sight of God. Whenever there is somebody in the bloodline that connects to the occult, 
it will travel throughout the bloodline. So you're saying, in my life, I haven't done anything. In my life, I haven't done anything wrong. In my life, I didn't do this and I didn't do that. It doesn't matter. Because you are guilty by blood association. So you're trying to figure out why am I struggling with the same thing that my wicked uncle, my wicked auntie is struggling with and I'm safe. It's because there is something in the bloodline that is fighting you because the, the demonic generational spirit that is attacking your family doesn't come against you individually. It fights the entire bloodline. There is something moving throughout the blood that is connected to you. I wonder if somebody's hearing me. So we came to win the war. Mashi Kamazukada. The war against your bloodline. You may not be able to pull everybody out of your bloodline out, but you can remove yourself from that altar. You can remove yourself from that curse. You can remove yourself from that blood tie. So it's not necessarily that there is something that is specifically positioned against your life. It is that there is something that has targeted the bloodline. That has targeted the bloodline. Watch this now. You and I committed no sin. Yet we are guilty of Adam's sin. Every woman is guilty of Eve's sin and every man is guilty of Adam's sin. But we weren't around. My name is not Adam. Your name is not Eve. But we are still guilty of what they did because you have to understand the power of bloodlines and how blood affects altars. Watch this now. I'm going to go deep. I'm going very deep. I'm going to help you to understand some things that have taken place throughout history. The more human and innocent a blood sacrifice is, the more power it has. The reason why there are so many missing children in America, the reason why the sex trafficking industry in America is so big and it is so, um, it is so, the, the, I think the, is a multi-billion dollar industry, a multi-billion dollar industry. The reason why that industry is so big is because the Bible says that the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light. Now, I'm, I'm not implying that we do the same thing. No, that's not at all what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to explain some things to you. I'm trying to explain to you why is it that all of a sudden the sex trafficking missing people, missing children has exploded. It's because as times become more and more wicked, as we get closer to the end, men are doing more and more sacrifices for money, for wealth, for fame. And this is what the, the Solomon says, there's nothing new under the sun. They was doing this in Bible times. There is a story of when the children of Israel were going against a particular king and the king knew that they were coming. He took his firstborn son. He slay his son. He killed his firstborn son. Because he killed his firstborn son, they could not take that city. I'm talking about people in the world understanding the connection between blood and altars. So let's go, let's, let's understand this thing now. The more human and innocent a blood sacrifice is, the more power it has. This is why many innocents were sacrificed before the death of Moses and Jesus to create a powerful portal for Satan to come and contend. When Moses was born, you see that Pharaoh declares all of the Israelite firstborn, slay all of them, all of the, the male boys. When Jesus is born, there is a decree and an edict that comes from Herod and it says to slay all of the male boys at a certain age. Why? Because when Moses came, Satan knew there is a deliverer that is being born. Something is happening. This, this is the man that is responsible 
Without Moses, there would be no Paul. Without Moses, there would be there, there would be no Exodus, no Genesis, no Leviticus, Numbers. There would be no beginning, no foundation for us to build upon. So when Moses was being born, there was a sign. Like I told you, every man, you don't know. When you get to heaven, you will find out. There is a star that's connected to you. So when he saw that, that star appeared, Mate Roko Moza, he said, no, no, no. Something said a deliverer is coming in the earth. So there must be a sacrifice so that there can be enough power that is generated for me to contend against this deliverer that is being born. The same thing happens when Jesus is born. And we see there was nowhere. You, do you realize that nowhere in scripture does it say that this encounter that Jesus had with Satan was a spiritual encounter. I don't believe it was spiritual. I believe that because of the death of the innocence that Satan himself was able to generate such capacity that he was able to come on the earth. He was able to come on the earth and literally in the flesh tempt Jesus. You, you say, man of God, what are you talking about? This is the same thing that's going to happen with the Antichrist at the end time. He's going to possess a man. He's going to work through a man. He's going to have a physical presence. So watch what I'm saying here now. One of the greatest things that Satan is doing right now is people don't understand. And this is not to target anyone because you've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. But I believe sometime in 2020 that we had surpassed more than 1 billion uh, abortions. In America alone, there were more than 1 billion abortions that have been done since Roe versus Wade. And so this is purposeful and this is intentional because the more blood that is spilt and the more blood that is shed, it means that the more power that the enemy is generating to do something. Because in order for what is going to happen and take place in the end times, much blood would have to be spilt. Karakonebe say. Demonic spirits need evil blood sacrifices in order to work, in order to perform their task and they do it and their duty. They need the blood sacrifice. I'm going somewhere. I don't want to stay in that area too long. When blood is sacrificed, it gives evil spirits legal authority and a physical presence in a place. This is why we have what you call haunted houses. Places that are haunted with evil. Whenever a blood sacrifice is done in a place, unless you are covered by the blood of Jesus from the crown, you're headed to the sole of your feet. Unless you are walking in a certain level of preset, stay clear of that place. This is why whenever I go into a hotel room, I don't do anything until I, I apply the blood of Jesus, until I pray the blood of Jesus upon every window, upon every door, every square inch, every sheet, every fiber, everything. Because I don't know if there was someone that was in there that were doing sacrifices. Whenever you move into a new home or a new apartment, whenever you go into a new office or a new space, you must anoint that space. You must apply the blood of Jesus over that space because you don't know what rituals, what sacrifices were made in that place. You will go somewhere and find that you, have, you had complete peace when you are home, but you went somewhere, you went to sleep in a hotel. You're being held down in the morning, in the middle of the night. Demons are visiting you. You're seeing shadows moving in your room. There are places that are consecrated unto the devil. Places that are consecrated unto evil spirits and evil powers. I wonder if somebody is hearing me. You don't just buy a car and just jump in it and drive. You don't know the demonic association of the person who's driving that car, whatever demonic association they may have. We're going to talk about the blood of Jesus in a second. We're going to, I'm going to make you to understand this. Whenever a bloodline is tied to an altar by someone in that family, by placing blood on an altar, then the bloodline is tied to the evil spirit behind that altar. And this is what we are going to deal with. We are going to go into the bloodline. And we are going to disconnect some things. We are going to abolish some things. And we are going to eradicate some things. Somebody say hallelujah. My bloodline is going to be free. 
mais au prakabano si prehezgi. Me la bachite behezga. This is why the most important aspect of Jesus' sacrifice was the shedding of blood. God the Father is so holy that he can only see bloodlines. God, God the Father, in the person of the Father, only deals with, only deals with bloodlines. So, so when he sees man without the covering of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are not dressed in the blood, he sees Adam. He sees rebellion. He sees sin. He sees disobedience. This is why the blood of Jesus is so important. But I'm going to go deeper. If you, if you catch this teaching, it will change your life this morning. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus atones for us. That means that his blood covers us and covers our Adamic blood and cries out for mercy on our behalf. So when Jesus' blood cries, when Jesus' blood covers us, just as Abel's blood was crying out from the ground, whenever God is about to judge us, the blood that covers us speaks over us and speaks upon us. Amen? It speaks over us and it speaks upon us. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm so excited about what God is about to say. This is why Jesus is the Passover lamb. Because the Bible says, when I see the blood, I shall pass over you. I want to pull up a scripture for you. Right quick, one second. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to show you the scripture. And then we are going to give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. Hallelujah. I want to show you the scripture. Exodus 12 and 23 says, For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door. I will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. The Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your house and to strike you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I wish I could do this like I want to do it this morning. I wish I could preach. This is the reason why communion is so important. Jesus said as often as you can, drink my blood, eat of my flesh, my body, and my blood. And, and the Bible literally tells us that people who deny or people who do not take communion often, that they are sick and dead because they don't understand that when you are taking communion, this Saturday we are going to do communion. When you take communion, that you are tying your blood and you are covering your blood with the blood of Christ. And this is why communion is so important. Don't let anybody limit your communion to a, to a fellowship experience. Some of you are going to start taking communion. When you feel sickness coming to hit your body, when you sense that things are going wrong, you have to understand the power of communion. Communion means a common union. It means that the blood of Jesus Christ not only enters you, but covers your spirit. So when there are some things that are coming against you, it is more than just prayer. It is more than just fasting. It is more than worship. There's also the power of communion. Because by the power of communion, you are taking the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and you are applying that to every situation. The power of communion. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to do it on this coming Saturday. There's going to be communion. It'll be my first communion as a spiritual leader and a pastor. And I would love for you to join me. 
The reason why communion is so important is because by Jesus' blood we are absolved from evil judgment. This is why Paul said many people get sick because they don't take communion. Because that blood is for continual protection. We must apply the blood. Because it gives us power to overthrow things. In a world, listen to me. I want to show you something before I wrap this up. You ever notice that before something major will take place in the world, that there will always be like a shooting, a massacre, someone will die. I want you to even look, watch this. This is going to blow your mind. I want you to look at all of the major skyscrapers around the world. Skyscrapers in New York, in Dubai, in um, France, major buildings. I want you to look at all the major monuments of the world because you have to understand that you cannot be at the top of Satan's world without his permission. God is God of the earth. Satan is the God of this world. There's two different things. The earth is a physical space. It belongs to God. But the people which constitute the populace of the earth belong to Satan for the most part. So you cannot be on top without his permission. I'm saying something here. So you will notice when you, when you check the records of every major skyscraper, every major building, every major monument, if you really, really look, there are so many deaths that would have taken place. Those things are not just taking place out of accidents or collateral damage, no. There are sacrifices that are being made, blood sacrifices that are being made to make sure that we can achieve success in this area. Because one of the things that you will understand, this is why Jesus says, is a, how hardly will a rich man enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier, easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Because they pass themselves through with many sorrows. To be rich and stay rich in this world, to be successful in the world and stay successful, to, to gain favor in the eyes of men and maintain that favor, Ah, somebody asks Mr. Sean Combs what it takes and how the world will swallow you up and spit you out. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world yet loses one soul? I'm telling you, this, this is so important that I'm teaching this morning. This is mind-breaking and mind-blowing because today is the day that you are removing yourself from satanic bloodlines and bloodline curses. The problem that we have in our country is not a family problem. It's not a systemic problem. It is an altar problem. And only someone who has been given a mantle with a certain level of priesthood can see that there was an altar that was made for the life of this country. There was an altar that was made, that was erected. There was a sacrifice, a blood covenant, a blood pact that was made for the life of the country of Haiti. The reason why many countries are in trouble, countries in Africa, is because there were blood covenants, blood sacrifices that were made. We are going to do some black declarations this morning. And as we make these declarations, we are going to break ourselves free from evil blood covenants. The Bible says, Hebrews 4 and 16, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. This is the greatest altar. We have the greatest altar which is called the throne of mercy and the throne of grace. There was no come boldly before Jesus died. You couldn't come before the... If you came before the throne of mercy and grace, boldly you would die. Because the presence of God was situated in a space called the holies of holies where you had to go to inquire. 
Only certain men were given that liberty and freedom to approach God, to talk to God. Men like Elijah, men like Daniel, men like the prophets of old, men like Moses, Abraham. But there was no, there was no Kamboli. But when Jesus died, the veil was torn in two. When he died, this became possible. In Hebrews 1, 16, we have the right to come before the throne of grace boldly and make our petitions known. Kaya Sata. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help when? In the time of need. In the time of need. God is still a God that will show up for you in the time of your need. Whatever it is that you need at this moment, be it healing, be it deliverance, be it provision, be whatever it is, he is here to make a way for you in the time of need. Whatever you need in this moment, the word of God says, God will be here for you in this moment. We have the most powerful blood sacrifice of any blood sacrifice in Jesus, in his blood. And we have the most powerful altar which is the throne of mercy and grace. Even occultists, even occultists will not deny there's a certain authority and power which has been given to that name. The Bible says that it pleased the Father to give him a name that is above every other name, that by that name, every knee that is above the earth, on the earth, and beneath the earth shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See, it's scriptures like that that you have to know, to know your authority. <laughs> Excuse me. There was one time that I was in, uh, I was taking a shower, I think, and I was looking and I saw these shadows moving and the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. He said, there's no demon that will come to you because you know too much. You know the name and you know the power of the name and you know the authority of the name. When you have a certain level of knowledge, this is why I'm telling you these things that I'm telling you because it may not be the greatest shout, the greatest preach, the most exciting thing to hear. But knowledge makes you powerful. Knowledge makes you powerful. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. When you know you can be free of demonic ties, bloodline covenants, blood sacrifices that would get done against you, your bloodline, your success, your... Oh, makraba suto brahas gadabas ikadabas. You are about to change the outcome of what would have been for your generation. You are about to change the destiny of your seat. Exodus 12 and 23 says, For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. You must make your house. What did they do? They made their houses an altar and they put the sacrifice of the blood, the lamb, upon the doorposts. I came to prophesy somebody out of trouble that whatever the destroyer was coming to destroy in your life, to take, to steal, to kill, by the power of the blood of Jesus, the destroyer is denied. I cancel premature death in your life. I cancel sickness in your life, poverty, disease, affliction, reproach. I cancel it in your life now by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Karamako there are evil forces that want to attack you, but they cannot attack you because of the power of the blood of Jesus. But what we are going to do now is identify some things. We are going to deal with some things that are connected to the bloodline. I was in prayer. I was praying for some people that have had lingering issues and lingering challenges in different areas of their life. And I said, God, why is this person struggling for so long? Remember what I said about the bloodline, that demonic spirits target the bloodline. And I started to see in different people's family and in their bloodline, in their DNA, there is an altar that must be broken, that they must 
and tie themselves by, by the blood of Jesus from the altar. Because by the blood sacrifice that, they, that was made, there must be a repentance. There must be a repentance and a renewing. There are people, there are children with autism that can be free if we remove the, the blood sacrifice. The argument that Satan will make against you, the accuser will make against you, is that I have the authority and the right to instill this sickness upon this bloodline, to instill this affliction upon this bloodline, to instill hardship, to instill difficulties upon this bloodline because of the sacrifice that was made by their ancestor. But this is the generation that will overturn the evil sacrifices and blood packs that were made on evil altars. Mr. Thomas Tekabanus, Ebrahu Kaban, Lekaba. Do you even know concerning this, this, this island where we live, Grand Bahama, the blood sacrifices that were made, the people that died, the children that died, so that this could be built? Makama Sukaba. Before this place even came to be, there were rituals that were done here by very powerful men out of the United States. There were rituals that were done here in order for this city to come into formation. Even if you understand, I'm trying to get people to understand something. Amen? Because if you understand it, you can be free. Even when you go to Washington, D.C., do you know Washington, D.C.? Why do you think they abbreviated D.C.? I wonder if anybody knows. That word, that, that D.C., that abbreviation means District of Columbia. And when you hear the, the, the term District of, of Columbia, you think it maybe has some association with the country of Columbia or something like that. But you would understand that Columbia is a fertility goddess. Columbia is a fertility goddess. It is the God that they worship when they built the country and when they built the capital. The entire capital of America is laid up like one giant ritual. The entire capital is laid out in the shape of, a, of the head of Baphomet. The entire city is a ritual. Just being there is a ritual. Because it's the axis of power of the enemy to persuade and influence the world. I'm saying something very, very powerful here. So in order for a generation to bring revelation, in order for there to be a manifestation of revival, there must be an understanding of the evil ancient landmarks that have been placed and planted. Why am I going into these things? Because God says you want revival, but you cannot take back a city. You cannot take back a nation. You cannot take back a region. You cannot war against principalities and wrestle with principalities and powers unless you understood or unless you know how to pray against the legal grounds that have been placed by the enemy before you can take things. There are some places in this city where there will always be accidents. There are some places where there, you, you can guarantee every year someone is going to die by that place. Because when rituals are done, these rituals ensure that there is a loop, there is a sequence that after a certain period of time, there will be another blood sacrifice to appease the spirit that is in that place. But when men lack revelation, we can never arise to the level. You will be praying until you are black and blue. You will pray until you are dead. Unless you understand how to deal legally in the spirit realm and deal with the rituals and the altars and the sacrifices that have been put in place, things will forever remain the same. Which auntie and uncle in your family is the reason why your family is fighting? Which grand auntie, your grandmother, your grandfather, your great grandfather, your great, who did the thing that has you fighting today? Kano sapra kamazi opazi, pelio zambra hokumastia, le cobra kapaski debe. I feel I felt the anointing come in the room just now. Reduma sangre ekodaboza, leprozoto boza. Bezo mamandusa, 
Somebody begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now because we've just touched something. We just touched something. Pani biza da basi kada bazi zeproto mozama meto makata zile prokuba kora makata. I'm going to show you how deep this thing is because I'm 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 sharing out of my spirit this morning. When I was a child, out of ignorance, my mother used to put a black cord around my hand. They did it in my family all the time. They did that so that they said they didn't want evil spirits to come and take the child at night, but you, what they would call infant death syndrome. So they did that as a way to prevent that, not even knowing that they were placing a curse on our lives. That instead of preventing spirits from taking us, they marked us for spirits to follow us through our life. Kama sukrahata. Some of you are trying to figure, why is my struggle so intense? Why is my battle so hard? Why is my challenge so difficult? Why are other men, my other mates, my partners, my, my friends, they are moving forward. Things are happening for them. They are building houses. They, they are owning this, they are going on trips. The things are happening for them, but nothing is happening for me. We need to deal with the ancient landmark in your family. We need to deal with the ancient landmark that has been set by that witch, by that warlock that is troubling your generation in 2024. They did something in 1924 that is affecting you in 2024. There are some declarations here. Glory to the living God. Mande Kabasuta. I want you to pray with me. I boldly decree and declare, number one, that any blood sacrifice involving my bloodline be cursed and destroyed in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Come on, say it with power again. I boldly decree and declare that any blood sacrifice involving my bloodline be cursed and destroyed in Jesus Christ. Christ's mighty name. We remove every curse from your bloodline. We remove a man to masitala. God, we cry out for mercy. God, that you will have mercy on us. That what we did not do, that we should not have to pay for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Me pati asata. O mazite le katabatasas. O bratakatakateza. I resona mazile. Le prosoma makata. Let's pray that again. Me zonabasa. I boldly decree and I declare that any blood sacrifice involving my bloodline be cursed and destroyed in Jesus Christ's name. Remoza. Let's go to the second one. By the power of the blood of Jesus, I cover and apply the blood of Jesus to my bloodline and my seed. Come on, apply. Don't plead, but apply. It is yours to apply. It has been given to you. By the power of the blood of Jesus, I cover and apply the blood of Jesus to my bloodline and over my seat. Let's go to the third one. Oh God, I repent on behalf of my ancestors that hated you. Oh God, I remove the names of me and my seed from the registry of wickedness. You're praying, God, do not count me as wicked. Do not count me as one that hated you because there is iniquity in my bloodline. But God, in the name of Jesus, I repent on behalf of my ancestors. I repent on behalf of any witch in my family, any wizard, any warlock, any soothsayer, any necromancer, any psychic that was in my family that hated you. Oh God, I remove the names of me and my seed. Call the names of your children. Call the names of your spouse. Call the name of your Oma Shekadaba. I remove the names of me and my seed from the registry of wickedness that we would not be counted with the wicked. Eh, Masufa. For blessed is the man who walketh not in the council of the ungodly, nor stand in the seat of sin, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Father, I repent on behalf of my ancestors, O God, that hated you, that did evil in your face, that did evil in your sight. I remove the names of me and my seed, I feel the Holy Ghost, from the registry of wickedness. God, I know I didn't do anything but if somebody in my bloodline has, do something, has done something, God, I repent that I may be free. Let's go to the fourth one. I decree and I declare that by the application of Jesus' blood, 
The destroyer will not destroy anything pertaining to my life. In Jesus' name. I decree, come on, say it again. I decree and declare by the application of Jesus' blood. The destroyer will not destroy anything pertaining to my life in the mighty name of Jesus. My crops will not be destroyed. My harvest will not be destroyed. My fruit will not be destroyed. My labor will not be destroyed. My family will not be destroyed. My increase will not be destroyed. There is no such thing as destruction attached to my name, attached to my children, attached to my seed, attached to my household. I decree and I declare by the application of the blood of Jesus that the destroyer will not destroy anything pertaining to my life. In Jesus' name. Let's say the last one together. Every blood sacrifice that has been done to wage a war of destruction against my life be absolved and eradicated now by the blood of Jesus. Every blood sacrifice that has been done to wage a war of destruction against my life be absolved and eradicated now by the blood of Jesus. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Hey, I felt something shake. I felt something shake. I felt something shake. I felt something shake. shake. Ratu me kataba, si kataba. Oh, glory to God. Ooh, there's a presence of God. There's a presence. Retoma sabra hakata. I felt an angel just come just now. I feel the Holy Spirit. Lepano sipra kabasu. God, let your spirit speak. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Let me be obedient to what God is saying. Spirit of the, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking so strongly. I saw this one. I saw, can Daisy, God bless you. I saw this one. I saw um, Keisha. I saw Keisha. I don't know. I saw, I saw like a man's name. I saw someone. I don't know if this is a man, right? But I saw who, someone whose name begins with like a T. I don't know if it's someone like a Thai something. I don't want to say Tyrone, but it's someone like, like a male. Like their name begins with a T. As I was, and I heard God calling the name of Keisha. I heard God calling Keisha. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Mande koma si kataba. Ebrahata bosa. Retalaba shile bosa dobo. Ebrahakata. Woman of God, I speak to you right now in the name of Jesus. As I see you, I saw an egg in the realm of the spirit. As I see you, I saw an egg. God said to tell her, I'm doing a new thing. I'm setting her up with new people in new places in the realm of the spirit. Hear the spirit of the living God. This is, this is crazy. But woman of God, I'm going to say what I saw. Number one, I saw you become pregnant. Amen. It's like I saw a fifth. Amen. And I saw God doing a new thing in your life. I saw God connecting you with somebody. I don't know if you know who that man is. But I saw this man with a name like a T or something like that. Um, and, then I, and then in the realm of the spirit that I saw this vehicle. I saw a vehicle like red. Like a red vehicle. Amen. This is for Keisha. Uh, and God is saying he's going to bless you with this vehicle. I saw a vehicle like red. In the name of Jesus, God is getting ready to overtake you with his blessings. Glory to God. God is getting ready to overtake you with his blessings. Woman of God, receive what God is going to do because you are ready for what God is about to do in your life. And he is speaking very powerfully. Hmm. Woman of God, just trust and believe that God is renewing. 
by this time, by this time, next year, hear me, by this time next year, your life will be completely different. By this time next year, your life will be completely different. Says the Spirit of the Lord, there's a process that is taking place. There will be transformation in Jesus' mighty name. Meto brahakatabasite, zero to total busia, me carabasikete. This one, um, Tamika Bobs, I want to speak to you. I want to speak to you. It's Tamika Bobs. I prophesy to you, woman of God. <laughs> I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing this thing like an eagle. I saw you beginning to fly. To, to Mika Bob's, I saw you like an eagle just beginning to fly in the name of Jesus. I don't know if I said this before, but I saw something. I don't know if you know what a chain and ball is, but I saw this eagle beginning to fly. As I saw this eagle beginning to fly, I saw a chain and ball attached to the leg of the eagle. I saw the Lord remove this chain and ball from the leg of the eagle. And I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus that any situation, any relational challenge that is holding you back, that is holding back your progress, your growth, your momentum, in the name of Jesus, the Lord says in this season he is going to free you and set you free. Because I see that there is a major restriction in your life that is connected to somebody in your life. And the Lord says, I'm dealing with that restriction right now. Yes, Holy Ghost, I hear you. And I see someone, I see like a letter K concerning your life. Like there's somebody important and I see like the letter K. I see the Lord doing a new thing in you. There's healing that is also coming to you. And the Lord said to pray over your body. That you are getting ready to experience complete healing. I don't know if you have oil. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, tell her to drink the oil. And to cover her body in the blood of Jesus. Because there is something that wants to attack. I'm seeing like, I'm looking at your body and I'm seeing different areas lighting up. I don't know if this is like a nervous issue or a muscular issue or tissue. I don't know. But I see different areas lighting up because there has been an attack against your entire body. But the spirit of the Lord is going to raise up a standard against the enemy. Your body is going to be saved. You shall live and not die. Ritumaza. And even as I'm seeing you, I'm being taken in the realm of the spirit. I'm seeing it choking. I'm seeing it like a spirit choking you. I'm, I've come to kill this demon today. I'm seeing like this spirit choking you, woman of God. I don't know if you've ever experienced like where you've been challenged with shortness of breath or something like that. But I saw a spirit like take his hand trying to choke you. In the name of Jesus, I cancel the plans of the enemy concerning your health, concerning your life. In Jesus' mighty name. And as I also saw you, the spirit of the Lord took me. I saw like this two-story place. I, it was like a two-story place. Uh, it's like a house, I think. And it's very nice. And the Lord said to tell her, I'm getting ready to bless her again. The Lord said, tell him, I'm getting ready to bless her again. That there is something about real estate and you owning something. I don't know if you have like a home now and you're believing God for what you really want. But I'm seeing you moving into this house. It's like a two-story house. It's like white. And it's, it's very nice. God said, tell him her blessing is on the way. Your prayers have been heard. And as a matter of fact, your prayers have been answered. This is for Tamika Babs. Rekomasa. That spirit, lift your hands, woman of God, right now. Because there's a spirit that has been trying to kill you, trying to choke you. Ke ba sika kama sikra ando sika mantia sambrehikata. In the name of Jesus, woman of God, lift your hands. I command that evil spirit, that tormenting spirit. 
that spirit of torture, that spirit of murder and spirit of death, there is somebody like, I don't know, ah, oh, Holy Ghost, speak to me this morning. I saw like somebody in the family, either the death was like unexpected or there was like a murder. Either it was a very unexpected death there was, or there was like a murder. This is like sometime within the last few years. There was, it's, it's not too far from here. There was a spirit that was assigned. I saw the spirit attack somebody. Now the spirit is trying to attack you, but you shall live and not die in the name of Jesus. I wish this woman of God would confirm to me what the Lord is saying. You shall live and not die in Jesus' mighty name. I enter now into your bedroom where that spirit will be standing. Mm, I declare that the last time it happened will be the last time. Because I saw one of God's spirit literally trying to choke you. But in the name of Jesus, I command that evil spirit, lose your life now. We plead the blood of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus. We speak the blood of Jesus. We speak the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I declare freedom, healing. Get ready for what God is going to do. I don't care what situation you may be in right now. Your future is very bright. This place that I'm seeing is taking me. Woman of God, you live in Nassau? This is Tamika Babs. Do you live in New Providence? Because what I'm seeing is taking me like to an area like I kind of remember it. Like I, I'm seeing like this area more like to the western area. I don't know if you, if you live in New Providence. Hallelujah. But the Lord is taking me there. It's about to be done for you in the name of Jesus. Rata sikata masikata zambroko topo. Okay, she said God has confirmed everything. Woman of God, also, one of the key to releasing your blessings in this season, the Lord is, okay, you should listen now. So, one of the key to releasing your blessings in this season, I'm seeing something in that western area. Amen? Receive it. One of the key to releasing your blessings is your ministry. There's a ministry in you. You are a preacher. You are a preacher. God is giving you revelations. I'm seeing you sitting down. As you are sitting down, I'm seeing an angel coming to you, bringing you a book. It's like you're getting revelations. You're getting revelations of the word, revelations in the spirit. God is showing you things. God said the period of sitting on that gift has come to an end. Now it is time for you to begin to, to show the world the revelations that God has been giving you. I saw an angel stand before you, and I saw him hold a book open. You were looking in the book. The book was just full of revelations, insight that nobody ever had before about the word. The Lord said, now is the time to start. I saw you on social media. I saw you on Facebook, and I saw you beginning to preach and beginning to share the things that God had showed you. And I saw men from all over the world, beginning from the nations of the world, beginning to look at you and say, how is she getting this revelation and this understanding? God said, now it is your time to speak. It is now time to speak in the name of Jesus. The things which God has been showing you. Because I'm even seeing something. I don't know why God is doing so much with you. God wants to do a great work with you. I'm even seeing like you saw Jesus. I'm seeing you like talking to Jesus. We have a lot of secret assassins on this broadcast. I saw this woman like talking to Jesus. Like Jesus was literally talking to her and telling her things, things that were to come. There's like a call of an apostle upon your life. Walk in your calling and in your assignment and let nobody hold you back. Let nobody disqualify you. Let nobody hold you down because the main challenge with this woman of God is that the enemy has sent people to hold her back. But anybody that cannot go where God is taking you doesn't need to be in your life anyway. In the name of Jesus, this is your season and this is your time. Because there was a season of your life. I'm seeing a train. God is taking me in the spirit. I don't know why God is doing this. I saw the train pass. You missed the train. The train is passing again. Meaning that there was a season of your life. 
that you were going to be disobedient, that you were going to be obedient to God, but you weren't obedient because you didn't have like complete strength to be completely obedient. But God say now there is another season that is coming and you must get on the train. You must go with the flow of God, no matter what the sacrifice is. God said for every sacrifice that you must make in this season, he's going to give you double, says the spirit of the Lord. Woman of God, record every prophecy and every word. God said, I shall surely bring it to pass in your life. I see something. I see the month of November. The Lord said, I'm going to do something powerful in the month of November. I'm also seeing something about the number nine. God said, I'm going to do something in your life concerning the number nine. Woman of God, receive. It is your season, your time, and your day. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh my goodness, there's a fire with this one. Thank you, God. Woman of God, receive your, your blessing today. God is doing it for you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody said the blood is upon me. 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 I don't know, Batari, I don't know if this is you, but I'm seeing somebody here like your, your father was either like a pastor or minister or something like that. This is, I, I think it's Batari. I don't know if your father was like a pastor or like a minister or something like that. I don't know if it's her, but I'm seeing this person um, very clear. Amen. I don't know, but I'm seeing like someone like their like their father was like a pastor or minister. I don't know if it's Patari. But it's like your father was like a pastor or minister or something like that. Amen. I don't know. If it's you, let me know. Like there's somebody here, like your father was either like a pastor, a minister, a deacon, something like that. Is what I'm seeing. Hallelujah. There's somebody that is about to go to another level. There's this name. Your dad, there's this Keisha, her dad is a pastor. God is doing it now. God is doing it. Um, there is someone here. There's a, this is a very weird name. I believe this is a nickname, maybe, or as a real name. But I keep hearing this name, Shake, like S-H. Let me spell it. If you know this person, either it's a, like a nickname or it's like a real name. I don't know if it's like Shake or Sheik, but I keep hearing it. It's like this kind of name, like Shake or Sheik. I keep hearing this name like Shake or Sheik. Like a name like that. If anybody knows who that is, let me know. As I keep hearing, it's, it's very weird. It's very strange. Like Shake. I don't know if that's a nickname or if that's an actual name. But if it's you, you will, you will register that you know who this person is. Like Shake. I keep hearing it. Amen. If nobody says anything, then we'll move forward. Many times, you know, people will say to me, man of God, you were speaking directly to me, but I didn't want to take that on at the moment. Many times. It's fine. Amen. Somebody said the blood is upon me. Avery, Avery place, Avery place, Avery place, Avery place, Avery place. Avery Place, Avery, Avery Place. 
this is a this is a, a, a young man this Avery place Avery place Avery place are you here man of God I believe it's a man I don't know I don't know everything the blood of Jesus is upon me by the, we prophesy by the blood of Jesus Amen. Hallelujah. Help me out this morning. Help me out this morning, Avery. Uh, that's, is that a young man? Avery. Hallelujah. Yes, my friend, I invited him on the live. His name is Andron. Andron is Avery Please. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Christina. God bless. Um that young man Andron. Yeah, who, Sinai, who's that? Who, tell me who that is, Sinai. This young man, I want to prophesy this life. Young man, are you here? Are you here? God help us this morning. Amen. Your sister who passed, that's her cousin. Okay. I don't, I don't know if he's here, but I'm just going to speak freely. Um, I'm, I'm not going to wait. I guess if he's here, you'll hear it. But it's, it, it does a better flow if the person is here. Amen. Um, the blood of Jesus is upon your life, man of God. I saw you um, connected. I don't know if you got to go. But I saw you connected to a university. And I saw something about, I don't even know if you know anything about this but God is about to do something major in your life. You're not just meant to be here, but God is opening up doors for you in other places. Because I kept hearing something about Boston, Boston, Boston. It's very strange. I can only say what the Holy Spirit is saying to me. I believe that this young man is about to travel. I believe that there is an, an, a gift of genius upon him. Because in his hands... I see mathematics. In his hands, I also see machine, machines, like machines, understanding of how things work. Amen? And the Lord says you have yet to tap into the reservoir of the anointing that has been placed upon your life. Uh, this is for Angeron. And so, Angeron, listen to me. Do not settle. You're not done yet. The Lord wants to take you into new spheres. Hear me in the realm of the spirit. God is going to use you, man of God, if you are willing to work with the spirit of God to pioneer, pioneer a industry. I see you doing something very unique. Very, very unique. Because, man of God, I'm seeing these things. I don't know how this is connected to you. But maybe the Boston that I'm seeing is like Boston Dynamics. Because that's what keeps coming to me. And I keep seeing, like, computers and machines working. I see you doing something like that. Amen? And, and a man of God, listen to me. God wants to open up your life. I also see there is a, a woman... Or let me say person. I see a female spirit, but it could be a man or a woman. I don't know. But there is a particular person that was sent into your life to hurt you. And I see where this hurt has crippled you in one or two areas. There is someone that came into your life and they shifted your life for worse instead of better. But the Lord says to tell him that in the month of April, 
I am resurrecting his life. I am resurrecting his life in the name of Jesus. From the arrows that have been sent to cripple you, to kill you, God says, now I see you rising, man of God, from the ashes. A new season is coming upon you. A new season is coming upon you. And as I'm, here, as I'm speaking to you, as I prophesy to you, I'm hearing, I'm seeing like a girl, like a baby girl. I'm hearing a baby girl like just crying. Hallelujah. Like this baby girl. I'm hearing her just crying. I'm hearing the sound of this baby, like a girl, just crying. Amen. But the Lord is saying, I don't even know what this has to do with you, but the Lord is saying this connection to this girl, hallelujah, that it is a cry of deliverance. And I see this, there's a connection with a season of deliverance connected to you and this girl, like a baby girl. I don't know what that means, but I know what I see. And I see this baby, I see the baby crying, Amen. Man of God, you can confirm whether or not what I'm saying is making sense or not. But I see her very clearly. Hallelujah. I see her very clearly. And so, I don't know if, if he's here or not. But I, I would go further if he would confirm. But I'm not going to say more than, than he's willing to hear. Because sometimes people are shocked by, <laughs> by what we are saying. Because this man of God is going to do some very very different things there is a there is an anointing of genius upon your life and that's why the enemy is fighting you so intensely who is this who is the girl the baby girl who's that i see christina i think you're with him i don't know who is this this girl i want to pray for this girl it's like all i could tell you is what i'm seeing in the spirit and i know i'm seeing in the spirit hallelujah he has to push himself beyond beyond that's his daughter okay he has to push himself beyond I want to pray for her her name reminds me of something like heavenly her name reminds me of something like heavenly. Amen. But there is like a touch of heaven upon her. Hey, Shakaba Suta Bahazi. We cancel every evil plan of the enemy against her life. Because the enemy has a, his eye heavy on that, his daughter. Because of the glory that is sitting upon her life. But when I see her name reminds me. Her name reminds me of like heaven. Amen. That daughter, she will be powerful. She will be great in the earth. Her name will be great in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Man of God, I bless you to prosper. I bless you to prosper. I bless you to prosper in the areas that God is going to give you influence and power. Wealth. Man of God, as I speak to you, the industry that God wants to take you into, you only, you only need to be pushed. This prophetic word has been sent to push you because I'm seeing like because of past failures and past challenges, it is difficult for you to push. But God said to push you into your season. I prophetically push you into a season now. I prophetically push you into a season now where you will shock the minds of the people around you. I said you will shock the minds of people around you. You will shock them. Their mouth will be open at the things that you will invent. You, are, you can invent. You have ingenuity. There's an impetus for greatness and genius upon your life in the name of Jesus. And God says you are pushed now into a realm of uncomfortability that will produce wealth because as I'm seeing you now, you're anointed by the things that you will create and deploy. You are anointed to be a millionaire. You will fund the kingdom of God. You will fund the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You will fund the kingdom of God. You are anointed for wealth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also,
Andrew Ron, as I'm seeing you, I'm seeing a box, a gift box with a wrapping, meaning that there's something new that is about to happen in your life. There's something new that is about to happen in your life. And so the Lord says, get ready for this new thing that's about to happen in your life. I see something getting ready to happen very soon. The blessing of the Lord is upon you. This one is very soon. It's close. Amen? It's very close. It's very close. Karama Sukotoposha. Mary, I want to pray for you. Mary Ben, I want to pray for you. Because as I'm seeing you, the Lord took me back into when you were a baby. I see you as a baby and I see like a woman doing something over your head, like rubbing something on your head. And the Lord said this will explain the fight that she has had in different seasons and times of her life. Amen? But at the same time she was doing that, the Lord was also anointing you. There is like this particular person like in the family, older, that has been a a, a, a point of resistance and contention concerning your life. The Lord said to tell her that she is about to walk in a dimension of blessings. That what, hear me in the realm of the spirit, you're about to walk in a blessing woman of God from past generations. Because it's like you're doing something now that generations that came before you, this is Mary Bean, Mary Bean, you're doing something now that generations that came before you were not able to do. Because you are the curse breaker of your family. And right now, I remove any demonic anointing that was placed on your life. We break it now, we remove it, we cancel it, we dispel it now for the glory of God. And what the enemy meant for evil, God is now turning it around for your good. As the Lord increases you, I don't know anything that I'm saying. I don't know anything about anything. But as the Lord increases you, the Lord is taking you. You are about to come to some levels. You are about to see some things even hit your account. The Lord is going to take you to some levels. And the Lord says to tell her, that the more he increases you, the more there will be fight with the family. There's like a point of contention. But the reason why is because you are breaking a curse and you are tearing down an evil altar. And this is why it is so important why your prayer life must be so fervent and your prayer life must be on fire. Amen? God bless you, Avery. God bless you. What they try to anoint you and they try to come against your life, they try to bathe you in things. Because there was someone ahead of you in your generation. This person was, I don't know if they'll call them a witch, but they were involved and their hands was in some things. Because I saw like someone try to, I saw like someone try to, it's like they would, they, they try to guide the family, try to lead the family. But, but God is raising you up as the leader of the family. There is something about you that you must do for your family. You must bring your family out. So God is raising you up as a prayer warrior. I see you. I see you with a group of women. I see you with a group of women. I see you early in the morning. You are praying. I see you. I don't know if it has started yet. I see you with a group of women. I see you bringing these women together. Early in the morning, you are praying. And God is going to use you to usher in a revival into your region. Kaya Katobis. Because as you were praying in this vision that I'm seeing, I saw a wind and a mist start to move over the land. Your assignment is very heavy and your mantle is very great. You must allow God. You say her name means gift from God. Wow. Woman of God, you must walk in your assignment. I don't know if you have these women, this is for Mary, that you all pray together. But I saw you like bringing these women together, these powerful women, they pray. 
They were coming together. You were praying concerning that region. I saw a mist come over the land, a wind, a breeze. As the mist came over the land, the mist came over the land because of those prayers. And I want you to know that God is raising you up as an altar in the land because he, he needs you as a vehicle, a delivery system to fight against the witchcraft altars that are surrounding you. I'm seeing seven, I'm seeing in the spirit very clearly, very 7.7 7 altars that God will use you to demolish in that region where you are. In the name of Jesus. Get ready to be used by God like never before. When people see how God is going to use you, they will be shocked. This is for Mary Bain. When people see how God is going to use you, they will be completely and totally shocked because God is getting ready to use you. Good morning, Minister Yvette. Chalisa, we bless God for you. God bless you. Oh my God, I want to, <laughs> I want to continue with the things that God is saying. I see that this young man is touched by God in a powerful way. I want to continue with the things that God is saying. But I know that my body cannot take anymore. <laughs> my body cannot take anymore. I can't. Amen. And so, as we get ready to go into this Saturday, I want those of you that can, please join me 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. Because my voice is going. Join me 9 a.m. this Saturday morning for the glory encounter. We are breaking blood curses, blood sacrifices. Amen. Amen. Please, if you can, bring a prayer shawl or bring a blanket. Because there's no more time to play games. Amen, Bernice Gibson. We are coming to prostrate ourselves, to bow ourselves down before God. There are some things in our bloodline that have to be broken, that have to be untied, that have to be loose in the name of Jesus. We are coming to loose some things. Kamazi kalabosota. And those of you, come on, man, get jump into the move of God. Jump into the wave of God. Jump into the wave, the move that God is doing. Amen. Jump into what God is doing. I don't know if Kadriana is still here. Kadriana, I want to tell you something. Very, I saw you. I saw the Lord anoint you. There is an irritant that is around you. I know that you are working. There is an irritant that is around you. I have to say this. This is a spirit that is designed to irritate you out of position. Because I saw you rise very quickly within where you are. And then I saw God shift you. God says he will lift you and then shift you. Huh. Somebody need to receive that. Somebody say God is going to lift me and then shift me. Listen to me. The, as I speak to you now, if I be not a man of God, there are eyes that are upon you. There are eyes that are upon you and they are watching your every move because they see a grace of leadership upon you. So you have to be early. You have to work harder. You have to push harder because God says, tell her I'm going to lift her. Then after I lift her, I'm going to shift her. Matarabasa. There is someone that wants to pull you into an issue. It's, the, it's small. It's very small right now. But in a few weeks, what is small will, will become bigger. But the Lord says, do not allow anybody to irritate you and push you out of position. Because that person is designed to be a resistance to you. But the Lord said, I shall lift you and then I will shift you. I will lift you and then I will shift you. Amen. My voice is gone. But I want you, amen, if you feel the power of God in this ministry and on this broadcast, join me 9 a.m. for our service. Join me 9 a.m. for our service. is going to be powerful. There are those of you that as we come to the close of our 40-day prayer challenge, there is a number that is the number that is a number of seasons of time and chance. Your time and your chance must come. 
it means that opportunities will come to Mika Babs, Chalissa Raming. It means that doors will open. It means that God will give you a moment, a space within the parameters of time within this month that will be a defining moment in your life. As I released that prophecy in the beginning of April, our sister Shanae Strong, at the same time, she re- there was a major interview by the 700 Club, and they highlighted her, and they talk about her story. So even though it was recorded in February, the interview was released in April, meaning that I, she don't even have to tell me. I told her, I said, when this interview comes out, God is going to allow some doors to open. God wants to put you in strategic position for your time and your chance. Your time and your chance. Your time and your chance. Those of you that are ready for it, I want you to join me and say, man of God, I believe I have faith for it. I want you to join me with a seed of $40. Make a sacrificial seed of $40. You're going to pray over that seed. You speak to that seed. Tell your seed, you are my seed of time and chance. As I sow this seed into fertile soil, I believe that God is opening up a dimension and space for me to encounter my time and for me to encounter my chance. As I'm on the altar of prayer this week, I want to take your name up before the Lord and pray on the mountain of prayer. So I want you to do it. Amen. These are the ways you can connect with us in terms of financially. You can always send to RBC, account number 724-2670, branch number 0525. PayPal, paypal.me slash glorygeneration, or you can find any links on glorygenerationministries.online, or you can give us a call, amen. You can give us a call with the number beneath. Uh, on our lower third is 829-0077. Right now, connect, connect with me. Any blood sacrifice attached to your bloodline, I decree, I declare that the curse is over. God bless you, Lakeisha. She said, I will so. God bless you. I decree, I declare that the curse is over. The curse is over. I said, you will come out. You will come out. Woman of God, let me tell you something. See, you have to understand the power of obedience. Because as you said, I will so. This Lakeisha Burroughs, I believe her name is. As you said, I will sow. I saw the angel of the Lord give you a book. Meaning that you're getting ready to release a book. This is why when you see, it's not always for you. It's not always for you. And this book is going to be on Amazon. It's going to go to bestseller. Amen. Sometimes when you feel something in your spirit. You have to release it because out of your obedience, God will release some things to you. And when you said that, when you said, I will sow, I saw a book released to you. I saw your face on the book. So the Lord says the book is already in your spirit, it's been in your mind, it's been in your heart. Now he is giving you the grace. The grace to do it was not before, but the grace to do it is now. There is a grace to do it now. God bless you, Bernice. I cover your life, your ministry, your family, your marriage in the name of Jesus. Even this woman of God is not about money. It's just about obedience. Hallelujah. Wow, the other daughter means, her name means gift from heaven. I'm telling you, God is doing it. It's not about, it's not a money thing. It's just about obedience and connection because there is no, I, I don't have any, I don't have any challenge with accepting the fact that God has called me. I know that this is a ministry that God has called and I am a minister that God has raised up. When you get past simple issues like that, then seed and things like that is not a challenge because you see the fruit of what God is doing in the lives of other people and you understand that this is much bigger than me. This is about God's glory and his kingdom being established. Because I saw this one, this Bernice, even as you said that, I don't know if you did it already, but I saw you. When I saw you, I saw a woman. A woman. I saw a generation skip. 
Amen. I saw a generation skip. Good morning, Kimani, Kimani Bethel. God bless you. I saw a generation skip and I went to another generation. And I saw that the same problem that you are now facing, I saw it in... Yes, there's a new one. Yes, amen. The, I saw a generation skip. Then I saw this woman, and I saw that this woman have similar challenge in the name of Jesus. But I saw a vision. This is deep. Woman of God, I don't know. I don't know if you're ready for this. Whenever God allows me to see it like this, it means that it's ready to break. This is powerful. My, my voice is gone, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. Because God is ministering to many people here this morning. <sighs> oh, no, God, there was something that was done. Whether by food or drink. But the Lord took me inside. I saw you from the inside. And I can only describe what I saw was a cloth throughout the body. It's like a cloth, a fabric, but it was like tying up everything. I've never seen anything like that before. So it was like there was either something you eat or, or you drink or you eat or something like that. And then I saw like I look inside and I saw it was almost like looking in an engine and I saw the gears, and as I saw the gears, I saw like a cloth inside, and it was like, it was jammed. And the Lord said, I'm showing you this thing because I'm anointing you to move it. It's fine, woman of God, just, just try again. I'm anointing you to move it. Woman of God, hear me in the name of Jesus. This has happened before. I, I remember I said it to a person. It didn't happen. I said, I think I said, I think I said five weeks and it ended up being five months, but it's fine. Mare kubara katubes kanabasha. Yes, woman of God, Kadriana, God is going to do it for you. Listen to me. We remove it now in Jesus' name. We remove it now in the name of Jesus. Any demonic gift that has been given to this woman, any demonic food, demonic drinks, drink sacrifice to idols, food sacrifice to idols, we cancel it and remove it now in Jesus' name. And woman of God, as I see you, I'm also seeing your husband. God help me. I'm seeing that there's someone that has fought against you. Help me, God. Because they wanted your husband. And so they sent curses against you. But in the name of Jesus, every curse fail now. God today, in Jesus' mighty name, let every curse fail against this woman of God's life. Whoever has tied you up, we untie you now by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because there are like several things, like it's a malfunction, but any malfunction in your body, we cancel it now in the name of Jesus. We cancel it now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woman of God, I saw, I want to go quickly back to Lakeisha. This, this, what I saw, it was, it was, um, it was like a devotional. I thought it was poems. I was trying to figure out what I was seeing, but it was like a devotional. I saw your picture on it. It was like a devotional. Amen. But it, it, say, it was saying things in it that people don't normally say, very hard and difficult truths 
to face. Amen. And it was for a period of time I saw people buying this thing, buying it. There's a grace to do it now. Do it, says the Spirit of the Lord. Women will be set free by what you shall release. So there was something that was sent at you, but it will fail. Woman of God, if you have faith, like I have faith for you, I'm telling you it will fail. Any malfunction in your body shall be realigned and corrected by the Spirit of God. If you have faith. If you have faith, it's done. If you have faith, it's done. I'm also seeing like this person that God wants to heal you right now. It's like there's an area around your... Oh God, I gotta go. There's an area around your... I don't know if it's your stomach or around the groin area. But it's like this thing will, will start bleeding and then there will be like pus. And then you will get treatment and then it will go away and then it will come back. It's like there will be it was, there will be blood and then it will start to like there will be pus and then it will go away and then you will get treatment and it comes right back. I don't know who this person is but there's something I'm saying. It, not, it doesn't even have to be in that area but it's the same thing. There's like this cycle there's blood, there's pus, treatment, it goes away, it comes back in a particular area on your body. Who is this? Because God wants to perform a miracle in somebody's life this morning. Even sometimes like the smell of it will be so much. Like it will carry like an like a smell. There's also someone like, okay, God wants to heal you right now. And God is here. The Spirit of God is here. I cannot leave. God is speaking to people. There's also someone. I'm coming to you right now, woman of God, because there's another person that God wants to heal. Right on this broadcast, God is going to heal some people. Bernice, get ready. Timothy, get ready. God is going to heal some people. Ma asambra hakaposia lebos. Listen to me. There is someone that your there's a woman that your cycle is not regular. That you will see it like every three months, but there's an irregularity with your cycle. I don't want you to say who you are. I don't want you to say who you are, but I'm going to pray for you, and it's going to become regular again, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't want you to say who you are, but it's going to become regular again. In the name of Jesus, there's a healing flow. Ma ha saba ha zabatus zemo. Right now, um, to me, Benice, Sanaya, anybody, if there's anyone you need to forgive, forgive them now. Say, Lord, I forgive anybody that may have hurt me, anybody that may have done anything to me. I forgive. I let go. Confess sin, amen. I confess my sins, God, anybody. Any sin I have committed against you, I, I ask your forgiveness. Cleanse me now in Jesus' mighty name. See yourself healed. Whatever that condition is, see it healed. The Lord wants to touch you now. Whatever that condition is, I see yourself healed. For he was wounded. He was bruised. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was placed upon us, upon him, sorry. And by his stripes, we are healed. Healing is your children's bread, but prayer of faith shall save the sick. If there any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The fervent effectual prayers of a righteous man avail much. Oh God, hear my prayer this morning. You, oh God, who hears and answers prayers, show these people 
that you are Jehovah Rapha, that you are the God that heals, that you are the God that answers prayers, that you are the God that constitutes the power of the altar behind my life. That you are the God that speaks to me in visions and prophecies and in dreams and in words of knowledge and wisdom. Show them the God of Elijah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Show them the God of Moses, the God in Moshe of Daniel in the name of Jesus. Right now, extend your spirit. See yourself healed. See yourself healed. See yourself healed. Whatever you could not move, whatever you could not do, whatever could not happen. If you could not produce fruit in the womb, see the child in the womb. If you had swelling and pus bleeding in an area, see that area healed. Oh, God, I feel the anointing. Hey, I cancel, I rebuke every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of sickness, every spirit of affliction, every spirit of disease. Oh, Mazibadu Sabadeza. Go in the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I bind you. I cast you out. Leave Bernice. Leave Tomika. Leave Sanaya. Any woman on this broadcast. Any man that is believing God for healing. I cancel. I bind. I cast out every evil spirit of infirmity, sickness, disease, and affliction. I command you to loose them now. Loose. Loose them now. Loose them now. Any demonic and satanic implantation in their system, in their body, in their oh makaya so oh my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command their body to be healed. I command their body to be healed. I command their body to be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God, I thank you that you have done it. Hey, Jesus. Thank you, God. It's done. It's done. Haya la sibraka. Erekomoza. In the name of Jesus, by faith you are healed. By your faith you are healed. Amen. Check, check, check your body. Check your body. Even if you have to go to the bathroom, by faith you are healed. Someone shall testify today. Not just somebody, but many of you shall testify that the Lord heal me today. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Thank you, Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, it is done. Receive your healing now. You shall testify that God has touched you. Do what you could not do. Move what you could not move. Check whatever wasn't working properly. Hallelujah. Somebody, your womb will produce. Somebody, your bleeding will stop. Somebody, the, the, the cyst is going to deflate. There's someone I see like a cyst deflating. There's a cyst is going to ooze and just die. There's somebody, there's something on your eye. I feel like it's the left eye. It's there, but it's the Lord is removing. I feel a healing bomb. The Lord is removing that thing on the, on the eye. On the eye that's been stopping you from seeing clearly. It's, 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 a, it's, it's like a callus. But in the name of Jesus, God touch, heal your people right now. There's somebody with a rash on the neck. A rash. A painful rash on the neck. The Lord is touching that now in the name of Jesus. There's somebody that God is touching the knees. Bend your knees. Your, your knees. Bend it in faith. There's pain. Painful knees. Painful knees. God is bend your knees now. Bend them now. God is touching it. In the mighty name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. There's somebody There's pain in the air. Ringing and pain. It's like an infection in the air. The Lord is touching your ear right now. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you that it's done. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that it's done. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Some, somebody, you are feeling fire right now. If it's you, tell us. Somebody, you are feeling fire right now. We command that rush to go in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody, you're feeling an electricity going through your body. Let us know by faith. Let us know so other people's faith can be stirred. Hallelujah. 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 God is healing somebody right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody, there's pain here in the hands whenever you bend your fingers. The Lord is touching you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is touching you right now. Begin to move your fingers in faith. Pain is leaving now. Stiffness is leaving. 
the rigidity in your hands is leaving. God is giving you new balling in your fingers, new balling in your hands. The pain is going away in the name of Jesus. There's somebody you have hemorrhoids, hemorrhoids in the in the buttocks area. They are going to deflate now in Jesus' name. Painful hemorrhoids go in the name of Jesus. I see it is going now. Somebody tapping by faith. There is the grace to heal. Here is here tapping by faith. This is not just a broadcast. This is an encounter with the Holy Ghost. Somebody receive your healing. It's there for you. It's there for you. It's God. He's touching somebody now. He's touching somebody now. There's somebody even like a click in your neck. There's a click in your neck. The Holy Spirit is healing you, touching you, transforming you by his glory. For he came to set the captives free. Jesus, you came. You came to set the captives free. Let them encounter your presence, your power. Thank you, God, that it's done. Amen. I want you to testify as soon as you can. There are at least three, four people that actually receive healing just now that God touched them. Go and check. Before today, you will declare that God touched something in your body. Amen. Father, we thank you for this broadcast. Thank you for all those that were healed, that will connect with their seed, that will connect with what God is doing. Hallelujah. Be blessed their seed. May it return to them a hundredfold. May it overtake them. In the name of Jesus, but may it allow them to overtake and conquer, recover all, and pursue, overtake, and recover all in the name of Jesus. I pray for healing for your people. Let their giving not be in vain. Let their seed not be in vain, but let it produce a mighty harvest for them. Thank you, God, for every prophetic word that has been spoken on this broadcast. May you bring every word to pass. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you're doing it for somebody. And may they know and see that you are great. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord, that is done. Get in touch with us with the number below on the screen, 829-0077. If you feel like God is doing something in your life and you need to connect with this ministry, Get in touch with us. Please join us. Please join us on Saturday at 9 a.m. We want to see your face in the place. There's going to be a powerful move of God. We're shifting a few things to make it more time conscious and to make it more enjoyable for everybody and to make it that as many people are as impacted as possible so you don't want to miss it. It's going to be a life-changing encounter every time you come. It's a blessing. Amen. So join us on Saturday for the Glory Encounter at 9 a.m. at Castaways Resorts and Suites. We look forward to seeing you. Until next time, God bless you. Keep you. Recover you in the blood of Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You shall live and not die. May the angel of the Lord encamp around you and deliver you. I thank you, God, that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered.